building is done and we're going to go ahead and show you guys all the nitty gritty things to this building from the outside in. And I tried, I tried to find a giant glass bottle of Bush Light to christen, but the best I could come up with was corn cans. The gates in this building are just like the ones in Site 2. All our gates are made by EIP Manufacturing in Earlville, Iowa. And like everything, they've gotten better over time. For me, one of the nice things is this is a shorter gate. This is like a 34 inch gate. So it's a 32 inch gate and they mount about two inches off the floor versus our first site has 36 inch gates, which is fine for Sawyer, but it's not so fine for me. I get kind of tired crawling them. All the posts are gusseted. In this building, we have a lot more posts than a standard pen barn because all these gates swing. Normally, when we get the pigs, we've got this fast alley down the back. So we'll, we'll unload the pigs and we'll run them down here and we'll start filling from that end working back this way. And as we fill, we'll swing. So just imagine the next pen is full. We'll swing this gate. And then we'll count 55 pigs into this pen. And then we'll go to the next one, and we'll swing this gate. When we're done, we'll have individual pens for each, for each group of pigs. And they'll stay in this environment until our overstocks go out. And then, when we take overstocks out of the building, we'll thin all the pigs down, and instead of being in one pen, we'll have one, two, three, four pens, or two feeders, all running together. So this is our feeders. We went with something a little bit different in this barn compared to any other barns we got. This is a wet dry feeder. And what we have in our other barns are dry feeders. We decided to go with wet dries in this barn because one of our dry feeders went bad at our other site and we wanted to test out what a wet dry would do and see the difference. And we really liked the product that Breeder Feeders gave us and we thought that the performance of the pigs in that pen with the wet and dry was really good. It's a lot of advantage to a wet and dry feeder, but the biggest and most important one is water wastage. Having the water and the feed all in one place really eliminates the pigs going back and forth and drizzling water into your pit. So you'll have a lot less water in your pit, which makes your manure quality better, which turns into a better, higher yield for you if you're a grain farmer. The second advantage is you'll have a lot less wear on your gates because usually if that was a dry feeder, you have the water cup here and you have your feeder. So the pigs go get, get feed and then they come over here and get a drink because they're thirsty. And having that water cup on there is you're going to have water on your gates constantly and that will rust them out a lot faster. And they'll also get, they'll take a lot more abuse because the pigs will just keep coming and coming and coming and they'll push this and push this. The third advantage of having a wet dry feeder is like I was talking about earlier, when you have a regular dry feeder and you have your water cup, the pigs, when they get feed, they get thirsty and there's a lot of salt in the feed. So when they're coming to go to the water cup to get a drink, some of that feed will drizzle out of their mouth and it'll get onto the slab. And the same thing with the water. When they get a drink and they go back to the feeder, some of the water is going to drizzle out of their mouth and you're gonna have a lot less wear on your slats because ultimately what wears slats is the salt that comes out of the feed. This part especially will have a lot less wear because usually they go from here to here, back to there, back to here, and that's, that's another big advantage. With that being said, you might have a lot more wear on your feeder pad, but you can go ahead and patch those up a lot easier than you can replacing slats. I would much rather 10 times out of 10 come in here four years later and epoxy these feeder pads, then I would have to take the roof off of my barn, come in here with a crane, taking these slats off, and it cost probably $150,000 to do that. So if I can save five to 10 years on my slats versus having to epoxy these more, I'm gonna epoxy these more. So as we said before, we tried out one of these feeders in one of our existing barns before we made the decision of what we were gonna put in here. And ultimately, we went with the Bremer PT feeder because of the features that it had over not only our dry feeders, but other wet dry feeders that we've looked at. And the key feature that I really like about it is these feeders have an agitator on them that keeps the feeder from plugging up. 
So traditional wet and dry feeders, one of the problems that you can have with them is as you adjust them up to keep the pigs from wasting feed, they can get moisture on this tray and it'll plug the feeder up. The, the breamer has an agitator that moves across the top of the tray and it keeps that from happening so you don't have near as many problems with the feeder plugging up. So at the end of the day, the one that we've had for two turns, we really like it and we've had basically no problems with it. So that's why we made the decision to go with the Bramer PT feeder and I think we're going to be really happy with it. One thing that is different kind of in a management perspective on these wet dry feeders versus our dries is we don't use the waters in the feeders all the time, or, or I should say to start pigs. So when we start pigs, we actually shut, if I can get up there, we shut the water off to this feeder. And the reason we do that is because when the pigs, when the pigs come and they find the water in this feeder, they're curious and they will just run it and run it and run it, and they'll fill this pan full of water and any feed that they get off the tray, it'll just be like soup. And they won't want to eat it and it'll get stale and we'll end up having to scoop it out. So what we do is we shut the water off in the feeder, but then we give them this nipple bar, which has the same number of nipples in it as what that feeder does. And it's easy for them to find and it's not creating a mess in the feeder. So to start them, we give them the nipple bar and we shut that water in the feeder off. But then as they grow, once they get to where they're, they're started and they're used to going to that feeder, when they get, oh, in a couple weeks, we'll transition them. We'll turn the water on in the feeder, leave the nipple bars in, but then eventually we'll take these nipple bars out and hang them up and they'll get all their water and feed from that feeder. So now that you guys kind of got an idea of how these feeders work and you know how the gates work, and you kind of know the little things that we did a little different, um, we're going to show you kind of our pin setup when we start pigs. What we got is we got a wet dry feeder here, we got a rubber mat, we got a nipple bar over here, we got a red snap in feeder here, and then we got a brooder here. Ultimately, what we're trying to do with all these things is give the pigs the best opportunity to start off right. First, starting with feed, we are giving these pigs every opportunity and really variety of where they want to get their feed from. So they got fresh feed in this feeder, so they come to the feeder, eat fresh feed. We map feed these pigs to start, so we put feed on the mat and on the feeder pad so they can eat here, there, there, and then we have these red snap-in feeders where we put the feed right out of the feeder in here and then we take some bag feed and throw it in here too. And like I said, you know, it's really just, we do all these things to entice the pigs to eat and it's really up to them on where they want to choose to eat and they are really social animals. So. Having this all kind of in this area is really good because they like looking at each other when they're eating. And then the second big pillar to kind of start with pigs is water. So like Dad said, we shut off the water in the feeder to start with, but we have this nipple bar right here with plenty of nipples on it per pig. So they can get fresh water whenever they want it and it's real easy to get to. But when we turn this water back on, then they'll have water in the feeder as well. And then we'll take these nipple bars out. But for a little bit of time, they'll have water at both places. Kind of the last pillar of, of us building this environment for the pigs is this brooder heater. So this creates a heat zone, but kind of just in this area of the pen, um, if you can imagine the heat kind of flows out like that, the, the circle gets bigger as it goes down. And when the pigs are up eating, running around, socializing, they don't need the whole barn to be super warm for them. In fact, they like it better, a little cooler because they're active. But when they all lay down and they want to sleep, it's just like you, you want to pull up that blanket to go to sleep. And this gives them a zone within that pen where they can come, lay down, and get warm. The whole building's not that warm because that would just be, it'd be too hot for them. So we create a micro environment for them. And the goal of all this is to give them the best, the best start we can get them started on feed, get them drinking, get them acclimated, because the sooner they get to eating, the sooner they'll get to growing, just be a, a great group of pigs, and that's what we're trying to do. So we're now we're down at the end wall where the tunnel curtain sits. This is just like my dad's solid sided building. Exact same design, tunnel curtain at the end. One thing that's a little bit different about this tunnel curtain is the, the 
bird wire in it, it's stainless steel, which is going to last us a lot longer. My dad's uh, tunnel curtain at his solid sided barn is plastic coated. So, I mean, it won't last as long as a stainless steel bird wire, but I mean, it's not a huge deal. So, most barns that are designed like this with the solid sided walls, usually they have a door that sits right here. And what we did instead is we put the, the doors on the corner of the building. That way that there's not a door here because it eliminates that split because if you had a door here the curtain would have to split one on this side one on that side that allows us to have a better even airflow through the curtain and there's a lot less maintenance on this curtain because there's fewer curtain pockets you have to attend to and all that stuff so it's less maintenance for us and better airflow for the pigs so these these are the heaters that actually create the the temperature for the whole room. So the brooder heaters make kind of a micro environment. These are what we use to heat up the barn to get it at our target temperature for the whole room. And there's three of these per room. And this is the same layout that we have in all of our barns, whether it's the solid sidewall barns or the tunnel natural barns, we have three heaters per room. My first barns have LB whites. The first uh, solid sided barn we did has actually an AP heater in it, which is a variable output heater. And then for this barn, we went back to just a pilot light on off heater with no variable fan in it. And the reason we did that is because what we found is in these solid sidewall buildings, we just burn very little heat. And so it's hard to get the advantage out of the variable drive because the heaters just don't run very much. So if I was building a barn today that was tunnel natural with curtain sides, I probably would spend the money to put variable output heaters. They're more expensive, and in these barns, we don't feel like we get an advantage out. So this is just a pilot light, um, 250,000 BTU on or off heater. Super dur durable and super easy to work on. So that was our main reason for our decision. Right here is what we call an inlet. And there's 22 of these per room, so 44 total, and it's an AP inlet. We only really use these in the winter months of the year and when we're starting pigs. And as you guys can see, if you look in here, it's open about a half inch. But when you have 22 of them, it makes kind of a big difference. And with these, the control knows uh, how far to open or close these depending on the stage of the pig's life. So more as the fans open up more, these inlets will open up more. And as the fans start to shut off, these inlets will start to close more. So the control knows to keep the air right and hit the target temperature of the barn that we had set. So now we're down at the fan end of this building. And so this, this barn has four 52 inch fans, one 36 inch fan. And then as you saw outside, there's four pit fans for each half, so eight pit fans total. So there's four that do this room. And we did the same thing here as we did at the other end. We eliminated the alley going to the end, and normally there would be a door here, but we moved the door to the corner. And the reason for that is because this is really, we don't really use this space down here. And we always run these first pens together instead of Instead of having two pens, we run them as one because the coldest pen in the whole building is going to be right in front of the fans or right in front of the curtain. So we open the gate and let the pigs choose where they want to lay. That eliminates them chilling on this side. Even though we've got heat in here, this is going to be the draftiest part of the building. We move those doors down there to the side and the doors really on three corners of the building, we'll never use those doors. They're basically just for if you had an emergency, say you had a fire, or say there was a tornado, or say there was something that happened and you needed to get out of the building fast, that's what those doors are for. The only door that we really use that is at a corner of the building is the one by the feed bin, because if you have feed that hang up and you're in the barn, you're probably gonna go out that door to wrap on that bin. But the ones at the other corners, we really don't use. So we just didn't see any use of keeping them in the middle of the building. Um, so we spread out our fans and it's more balanced. Not that that makes a lot of difference, but um, it just makes a lot nicer finish by having here. And all these fans are staged off of our target temperature, excuse me, is our target temperature, because as it increases, we, we move more air through the barn, and that's how these fans each kick on one at a time.